the moon now is moving into Aries and well, and while I was reading through this it just kind of just kind of thinking about it once I noticed that the moon move, transits from Pisces into Aries Martian energy kind of came through and was like yeah this bitch is getting a taste of her own medicine and then the moon kind of like turned around and was like hold up buddy listen here I'm going to need you to calm down a little bit I'm on your side okay don't piss me off right Hello everyone, welcome to your weekend dose of tarot and astrology. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading, yes, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is astrology from the true sidereal point of view, yeah. So uh, if you are more inclined toward the tropical or maybe even Vedic uh, system, I invite you to take a seat you know, grab a cup of coffee or something and just listen um, and see how these energies may be resonating with you and then definitely go back and, um, and cross-reference if you like. Um, <clears throat> and even though we're going to be talking about transits over this specific weekend, which is June 4th through the 6th of 2021, these energies are still fluid, all right? So this could be still a bit of a timeless reading. So take literal the the time frame in which we're talking about the transits but then when it comes to the actual energies and the movement through that energies of the transits that could be taking up more time than just this weekend okay um yes 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 i don't really have anything to say other than that um other than i did something kind of new with my hair today i just instead of putting it in a bun i just let it and it's actually really cute. I'm excited about it. Okay, anyway, let's just get into this here and um, set the stage and then we'll talk about what's going on with the weekend. Yeah, here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the situations, situationships, romances, relationships, places, and circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys. So, what is going on this weekend? Well, <clears throat> first things first. I do want to I want to mention and kind of remind you guys that we are moving towards the new moon uh, this coming week. So, uh, I believe the new moon is on June tenth, and it will be. It's a, a full. It's a solar eclipse this time, um, which is normal. You have a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse. You have your eclipses one after another, right? Uh, but it, it is going to be in Taurus and it seems like everything that um, we've been through so far with this past week moving into the next week um, everything is so in alignment as you when you like really sit down and you observe how the planets are moving and what the aspects mean what it means as it's moving through the signs and how everything is related to each other it's really kind of awesome to see how kind of perfect everything really is in terms of the, the, the potential for expansion and for growth uh, internally, okay? Um, it, it's kind of blowing my mind, really. The more that I, I pay attention to all this stuff and watch how things move in a sequential order, the more things make so much more sense to me now. And, it, and, and now that I'm able to, or I'm taking the time to really look at this, it's making it a lot easier for me personally to deal with what's going on because I'm aware now. You know, I can see it happening in the planets, in the aspects and everything. So it just makes a lot of sense. It's really, really cool. I'm loving it. I hope you guys are too. But let's get into this. So today, Friday, uh, we have a sextile between the sun and the moon. Now, this is kind of a minor aspect just because it's a sextile. Sextiles and trines aren't really... Um, I mean, they're, they're aspects to pay attention to, but they're not really the most important trines and sextiles tend to be like gifts um with a trine you have to 
the, the, the downfall of a trine is that things come really easily or naturally, especially if we're talking about a, this type of aspect in your natal chart. And so you kind of have to really put some conscious focus into it because with that ease um, comes the potential for development of weakness because you don't really have to try so hard, right? So you really have to continue. It's like, it's like, um, muscle atrophy, right? If you don't use certain muscles, they're going to, they're going to atrophy eventually if you give it, if you let it go long enough. So you have to continue flexing that muscle for it to strengthen, for it to stay relevant, I guess I kind of want to say. So this sextile between the sun and the moon, First of all, a sextile is like a creative opportunity, right? There's a there's a potential for creation here. Uh, if you if you boil it down, it has the word sex in it. So and sex is or sexual energy is creative energy, right? But with a sextile, you have to choose to step through that doorway or to work with those energies for the creation. Now, I feel like this sextile between the sun and the moon is really just kind of um, an amicable energy that will help you. Uh, work with the energies of the weekend in a creative way to help fuse your inner and your outer realities together. So you remember earlier in the week, we had a conjunct, not, I'm sorry, not a conjunction, a square between the sun and the moon. So like a lot of the energies of the week was like a face off between your inner and outer realities, especially with Mars having moved into Cancer and Venus having moved into Gemini, okay? Mars is debilitated in Cancer, and so your drive um, and your your personal focus is in opposition or could potentially be in opposition with like the community around you or your family, your friends, your loved ones, your closest ones around you, right? So starting on Friday or starting today, we do have this sextile between the sun and the moon, and I just feel like this could be an energy of conception where we had opposing energies before. Now your inner and outer realities have the potential, should you choose to accept it, have the potential to really start to fuse back together or they have the creative potential, potential to create a new sense of fusion or harmony between your inner and, and inner and outer realities, okay? Now, we do have a square between the moon and Venus for most of the day on Friday. So some of the issues surrounding your values and your interpersonal relationships may be able to find a resolution, at least mentally. Now, this square is a square is a, a challenging aspect, but challenge only brings really when you really think about it, challenges just bring the potential for change. And um, challenges are not always bad. Challenges are good because it helps you to develop and grow and flex your muscle a little bit. Use the sextile between the sun and the moon to really, um, uh, to, to, to use that as the potential, the, the, the fertile ground, the breeding ground even for any sort of integration of these challenges between, you know, your, 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 your thought process, your mind, your emotions, and your interpersonal relationships, okay? Um, you can also use the conjunction between Mercury and the Moon and Venus. So Mercury is also, uh, is conjunct the Moon and Venus for most of the weekend, I wanna say, but really, actually no, really just on Friday. Um, and then Mercury remains in conjunction with the Sun throughout the weekend, but just like Friday, it's like a conjunction between the Moon and Mercury, all right? So again, these are all really positive, beneficial, and helping energies. Mercury is in retrograde right now, which is giving us the potential to break through some obstacles or create some sort of change. And this fusion-like energy with the conjunction between Mercury, the Sun, and the Moon is again another potential beneficial energy to help you create some sort of change in your life, all right? Now, now, we get into a little bit more of the more challenging aspects of the weekend, but even, but, but it's challenging, but it doesn't feel like it's any more challenging than what we may have experienced over the coming week, over the past week, excuse me. It's a challenge because it's a square. It's a square between Mars and the moon. However, Mars, yes, Mars is still in Cancer, is going to be in Cancer until about July 5th, I believe. Um, the moon rules Cancer. And for most of the, the, well, for the last few days, the moon has been in Pisces, which gives you 
uh, a very emotional reality. It gives you a very intuitive mental reality. It gives you uh, also a kind of mental focus surrounding co the collective and the people around you. Now, the moon is squaring up with Mars this weekend. But this, this could be challenging. You may feel at odds between your own drive and a need to care for others, but that also may have been the energy of, you know, the general energy just when Mars moved into Cancer, okay? But the moon rules Cancer and Mars rules Aries. And it just so happens that on, let's see, is it... Oh, I didn't write it down. I don't remember which day. I think it's um, Saturday, like late in the day on Saturday into Sunday. The moon now is moving into Aries. And while, and while I was reading through this and just kind of just kind of thinking about it, once I noticed that the moon move, transits from Pisces into Aries, Martian energy kind of came through and was like, yeah, this bitch is getting a taste of her own medicine, isn't it? <laughs> isn't she? And then the moon kind of like turned around and was like, hold up, buddy. Listen here. I'm going to need you to calm down a little bit. I'm on your side. Okay? Don't piss me off. Right? Now, because the moon rules Cancer, and Cancer is a very loving and beautiful and compassionate energy, but Cancer is moody. Like, you, you rub Cancer the wrong way, she'll flip around on you real quick. Okay? So now, with the moon moving into Aries, this kind of feels like an energy that is supporting or helping to helping you process some of the some of what may have come up as Mars made its initial transit into Cancer. I mean, Mars is still in the first degrees of Cancer. Again, it's not going to move into to Leo until the 5th of July. Um, but as the moon transits into Aries, it's like you finally get to, oh, okay, let me say it this way. There has been a struggle for Mars while in Cancer, but when the moon moves from Pisces into Aries, the mental and or emotional focus could be brought to yourself. So it's like you finally get a chance, you finally get a break to step back and say, okay, all of this stuff that I've been faced with, that I've been in opposition with between my drive for my per own personal gain and my own personal uh, direction and the how that's opposing maybe some people around me, my loved ones, my family, my friends, my kids, my significant other, and all that. What does that mean for me? How do I integrate that? How do I fit that into my life? Because yes, it's beneficial for us to, to you know, have a, a focus around surrounding the people around us and the community. But you can't completely give yourself away to everyone else around you. You have to keep some sort of self-preservation intact and i really do feel like at, with the moon being in in aries uh for the week for the end of the weekend really the last half of the weekend you kind of like i said you kind of get like a little bit of a reprieve it's like an energy of like <sighs> okay so what do i do about this how do i feel about this how do i move forward with this right okay and and there this all kind of sets the stage for this new moon solar eclipse that we have. I believe it's on Thursday of the coming week. I know it is on the 10th of June. Yeah. Okay. Where do I want to go from here? We're going to start with the Moonology deck and see what we can get for the weekend. Three shuffles. So this is two and this is three. All right. So energies for the weekend here. What messages do we have for the weekend? Yep. Okay. This is good. So we have, look at the bigger picture. And I, in t initially, to be honest, I feel like the sextile between the sun and the moon helps you to set the stage for that. Because in order for you to really integrate a lot of these energies or make any sort of change, you have to look at this from the bigger picture ultimately okay and then once the moon moves into aries that's when you can kind of narrow your focus and settle into it and start to see how the bigger picture 
can be or how your life can be shifted or changed or how these bigger picture energies can be integrated into your life now we're not we're not we're not saying that you need to make all kinds of changes right now but at least on a mental level this will help you yeah see conclusions are within reach okay so really work to understand what this all means for you and how can you integrate and balance these energies in your life that's where your conclusions are going to come into fruition okay that's enough there yeah at the bottom of the deck now we do have a new start is coming and i definitely and this is look at that this is at the new moon so i definitely feel like the new start is coming in terms of the energies of this new moon and how the how the new moon really is set up to help us make some really new uh start some new beginnings start some new processes i have a whole outline surrounding the new moon that i'm going to record a video for and get that out either i might do that sunday or i'll just do it early in the week next week depending on how my weekend goes all right let's get into some tarot here we're going to use the vice versa deck again today and i'm going to get this five shuffles here one two My shirt's wet. Oh well. Three. <laughs> Four. Oop, try that again. Four. And five. So what do we have for the collective? What what do we want to talk about for the collective today? What do you want the collective to know for this weekend, this spirit, please? All right. Overall energy, we do have the Six of Pentacles. And we have that with the Empress. All right. Venus energy. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to say. Um, I shared in the community tab last night a lecture by one Gigi Young. She's one of my favorites. Um, and she was talking all about Venus. And um, and there was a really interesting part of the, of the lecture. I highly recommend that you guys check it out. Um, it's a great to have just like in the background, you know, or just to give yourself something to think, think about, something to process over the weekend or like whatever. But there was a part of that lecture in which she described how the planets in our solar system are really just a representation of Venus in past circumstances. Uh, Venus is known as our the, the, the twin to the Earth. And Venus and the Earth go through these phases where they, they energetically overlap each other and then go away and then part and then come back together and part. And when this overlap happens, a portal opens in the center of the Earth and the center of Venus that allows Venetian uh, uh, individuals or beings or people to come, in, come to the Earth through that portal. <clears throat> such a beautiful lecture like it was so eye-opening and like mind expanding i really loved it but the one thing that i want to point out is that mercury and mars are um representations of venus through its evolution um, and ascension to where it is now in the higher plane of existence now obviously there is a 3d representation of venus in our solar system that we look at all the time that we that we focus on but the uh, dimension in which Venus has beings on it is higher than where the Earth is right now. And uh, Mercury and Mars are seen as the old Venus. Mars is a failed version of Venus in terms of the, it was a failed masculine version of Venus. And Mercury was a failed feminine version of Venus. However, Mercury, uh, where Venus is now is a representation of those two sides, uh, those two um, failed experiences of Venus. However, Mercury is also seen as or, or known as the hermaphrodite or the fusion, the blend between masculine and feminine energy. Where was I going with that? 
Ah, the sextile between the sun and the moon. So, and Mercury is in retrograde right now, and Mercury being in retrograde allows us to break three break through some sort of patterns to help us reshape our internal reality and thus in, and shape out our external reality. And so with the sextile between the sun and the moon here for this weekend, obviously it's mostly today, uh, Friday. Um, but then with the conjunction of both Mercury and the sun and the moon that's happening over the weekend, there is a strong energy of being able to really really balance and integrate things from a masculine and feminine point of view. On top of that, we have the moon moving from Pisces into Aries, and the uh, 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 which is, the moon is the ruler of Cancer, the moon is more of a feminine energy, Mars is in Cancer right now, Mars is, Mars rules Aries, so there's another representation of the masculine and feminine being in opposing energies of each other, and yet being able to with all the other supporting aspects, being able to really help uplift all this energy and really help us integrate these energies to basically give birth or to conceive of a new reality or a new version of our internal and external realities. Yes, Venus, the Empress. Overall energy is, uh, is the Empress with the Six of Pentacles, all right? So the, uh, there is a really supportive energy of balancing out give and take now this does not mean this does not mean that you cannot still stand on your own you do have the nine of pentacles and especially with Mars, I'm sorry, with the moon moving into Aries right now, this is a supportive energy of, uh, well, moving into Aries over the weekend. This is a supportive energy of us being able to stand and say, okay, how does this fit into my life? How does this work for me? Nine of pentacles. We have that with the three of cups, the eight of cups, and the nine of wands. I do feel like there are some sort of communal aspects of our lives that we may be walking away from, leaving behind us. Now, also what I'm getting with the nine of cups, I'm sorry, the three of cups, the eight of cups, but then the nine of wands, um, there are some things that you may be facing leaving behind in terms of what could be better for the community right now. But also what I'm getting with this is that this might be really difficult for you, okay? But don't give up. Persevere. The Nine of Wands. Uh, especially with... I found it so funny when I was looking at Mars and how the Mar, how Mars and the Moon are kind of interacting with each other right now. And when I noticed that the Moon was moving into Aries, Martian energy came through and was like, yeah, this bitch is getting a taste of her own medicine, isn't she? And it's like... It's kind of like... Seriously? Seriously, buddy? But that's where this Nine of Wands energy is coming through. You may feel battered and bruised right now. You may feel down and out. You might feel, I don't know, diminished in a way, debilitated in a way, but that's okay. This is all a process of learning and integration, all right, <clears throat> and expansion and change, and you're not going to create any sort of change without some sort of struggle, all right? It's just it. Let's get a little bit more here, please, spirit. Okay. Page of Pentacles now, but still the Empress on the other side. Um, your, your facing's entering into a new reality. And what's interesting here is what's come out. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, good. What's come out here so far now? You have the Seven of Wands in reverse. You have the Nine of Swords in reverse. You have the King of Wands in reverse. And you have the Three of Swords. So what this is saying to me here is there is an energy of needing to tear down your defenses Put your ego in the back seat and allow yourself to face the heartbreak that's coming up or to face the pain or challenges that are coming up for you right now because you really are stepping into a new form of reality or you're, you're basically going through a level up here. Okay, that's what I see the Page of Pentacles as. And the Empress is still here supporting you unconditionally and loving you through this, but... Should you stay in this strong Martian energy of really being overzealous, over self-centered in your focus, the Empress is not going to be able to help you, okay? 
she's literally going to have to turn her back and say, all right, well, you know what? If that's how you're going to be, I'm just going to sit here and wait until you're done with your temper tantrum, Sir Mars. <laughs> right? Okay. Allow yourself to face your fears. Allow yourself to go through this integration process. Allow yourself to be, allow yourself to put your ego in the back seat and really face what's coming up here. Okay. It's a challenging energy, but it's an energy of integration. It's an energy that's going to allow you to just create a new beginning, to start on a new beginning. All right. Remember, sextile between the sun and the moon is like a creative, a creative integration. This is literally the masculine and the feminine coming together within you and conceiving of something new. I mean, you could even, even in this time frame, I mean, someone could actually even get pregnant. I'm not even going to lie. That's something that I'm picking up on here. So there's that. The masculine and feminine energies are very attracted to each other in a sextile. They're brought together. And so that creates the landscape or the uh, fertile ground for conception. Okay. Let's get some clarity. Five shuffles. I want to talk about this energy. Nine of swords in reverse, seven of wands in reverse, king of wands in reverse with the three of swords upright. Yeah? Let's talk about that. Five shuffles here. Or three. Three is better. One. <laughs> Two. Whoops. All right. So what's this energy here? Nine of swords in reverse, seven of wands in reverse, uh, king of wands in reverse with the three of swords. First and foremost, take down those walls. All right. Take down all the defense mechanisms. Any so it, it really it really is translating into your defenses and your ego that are keeping you from facing the challenges that are coming up for us right now. King of Swords, you need to allow yourself to be prepared or to be in an, in, in, in an energy to see things as clearly as possible right now. So you really got to break down, you really got to take down those walls and those defenses with the Seven of Wands in reverse and the Ego with the King of Wands in reverse, okay? So what is this, please, Spirit? The Devil. Would you look at that shit? Fear. Uh... uh Ah, good, 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 good. So whatever it is you've been attached to, whatever it is you've been holding on to, Spirit is saying it is time for you to rise above and let go of that, okay? There is potential in this energy, maybe of this weekend or just moving forward for you, especially when we get into the new moon solar eclipse, there is potential for you to see past the illusion, the devil with the hanged man. There is potential for you to be able to see the bigger picture or to see some deeper aspect of any sort of challenges that you're dealing with, um, toxicity, codependencies, addictions, any sort of fears that you have, anything that you may feel like you are just chained or bound to, you have the ability with this, I'm hearing specifically, with the sextile between the sun and the moon and then everything else that's happening this weekend, but I did hear the sextile specifically, you have the ability to change this and you change this by uh, letting down your defenses, getting your ego out of the way, and facing your fears, okay? That's how you have the opportunity to change your perspective here, to get a sense of enlightenment that is going to lead you down your path in a much better way, the three of wands. Much more integrated, much more balanced, much more self-aware. And you know what's so crazy? Mars being in Cancer right now, transiting through Cancer is, yes, debilitated, but it's also giving you a unique perspective in terms of, who it is you truly are and how you relate to the world. Or even how you may want to relate to the world. And when the moon moves into Aries there, it's like you get an opportunity to see how you may have been in a complete autopilot energy or maybe just really self-centered or something and change that, shift that, okay? 
This is going to lead you down your path in a much better way, but you have to answer the call. The judgment at the bottom of the deck underneath judgment is the moon, then to the counterpart of the queen of swords, to the seven of swords, to the chariot, to then, there you go, there's the new reality, there's the level up, there's the new start, the page of pentacles with the empress underneath that, all right? So the, sun, the, 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 the king of swords was at the bottom of the deck when we first started before we got this actual pull, right? And the King of Swords was asking you to have an open mind and to see things as clearly as you possibly can, okay? You're asked, being asked to rise above and face the illusions or, or face your fears or allow the moon to help you reshape things. Then there comes the Queen of Swords, which helps you to cut away all of the deception that keeps you from being in direct alignment or best alignment with yourself and moves you forward, allows you to move forward on your path on a much more beneficial and integrated way. The chariot does have this, this white horse and the dark horse. This is a representation of the masculine and the feminine, the light and the dark, the good and the bad, all of the parts of yourself that need integration that can get you moving in your direction on your path okay so face this don't run away from it don't hide in fear it's time to stop allowing fear to hold us back it's time to change the way we view the world or change the way we view our circumstances and get a higher perspective or an enlightened perspective or even just a changed perspective so that we can move forward in a much more beneficial and positive way okay Okay. Is there anything else that we want to clarify? No, that's it. I am wanting to move now to the Angel Answers deck. If you have a question that you really want to ask, pause now. Actually, no, don't even pause because I have to shuffle. But you could pause if you want to. I'm going to shuffle. I'm going to give this five shuffles. But if you have a question, think about it. And we'll see what kind of answers we can get for that. If you don't have a question... Don't worry about it. This is two. We can just see if there's more clarification that will help you here. This is three. This is four. And this is five. All right. Angels, what answers do you have for us here? interesting because I've been using this deck for myself personally lately over this last week and the same cards have been coming out here. So at the bottom of the deck, you do have Ask Your Angels. Now, if you're having a really difficult time during this weekend or even this period moving in through the new moon solar eclipse, um, the, the, what Spirit is saying, what the angels are saying is allow yourself to lean on the support of your angels if something is going wrong or you have a question or you don't quite understand what's going on here make sure that you communicate with your angels you also have weight and trust so what this is kind of saying here especially in terms of any question that you may have if there's something new that you're looking to go through or at, or or start on expand on or if things are if you're kind of i feel like some some of you may be starting to panic a little bit don't do that. Don't worry about it. Wait and trust the process because it's not over yet, okay? There's still more that needs to happen. I feel like there is divine timing surrounding your situation here. You just have to wait and trust. But if you're really getting crazy about it, if you're really starting to lose your cool, rely on your angels. Connect with your angels. Speak with your angels. They will give you the answers that you need at the given moment, okay? Closing Oracle Guidance is coming from the Crystal Mandala deck. Okay, Crossroads of Destiny did just come out here. And that seems kind of perfect because I do feel like we've definitely been at a sort of crossroads lately, especially over this last week. Um, however, well, no, we've been in a crossroads for a while. But this past week, three shuffles here. This past week has been a point where we can start to move forward or take action. Um... But at, for a lot of us, I feel like this crossroad type energy is really coming to a head this weekend or over this uh, 
over the new the new moon solar eclipse because the new moon solar eclipse is the time where we can really start to put things into practical action in terms of what we've been learning over this last moon cycle between the full moon, uh, Mercury going retrograde, and now this new moon that's coming up. Again, I have a whole outline for that. We're going to get into that in another video, okay? Three shuffles here. One. Two. And uh, three skis. All right. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. We got two of them, so I'm going to read them both. First one we got was card number 40, Goddess Persephone and Ruby, the Inner Queen. And the last, the second one we got is card number 45, Goddess Gaia and Ocean Jasper, Goodwill. Let's start with that one. We'll just go in numerical order here. We bring you the empowerment of goodwill. There is a type of spiritual power you can co-create which benefits and protects you whilst mutually empowering others to take their journey and experience divine success. This spiritual power, known as goodwill, is generated by how you feel inside and the attitude you cultivate towards others. When you know you have value, it is easy to recognize the value in another. When you feel encouraged by the universe, it is, e it is easy to encourage others. As you put out support, encouragement, and goodwill for the success of all beings, this energy is amplified and returned to you. Okay, now card number 50, the inner queen. We bring you the empowerment of the inner queen. The inner queen exer exercises authority through divine feminine wisdom. Her empowerment is active within men and women that consciously seek to honor feeling, instinct, and intuition, and choose to live their lives according to a moral code of compassion. When the inner queen stirs within, judgment is replaced with empathy for your own suffering and that of others. You can understand that human beings who cannot resolve their suffering will unconsciously act out their plan in the world. There are, or, I'm sorry, they are unconsciously expressing their inner story with their outer actions, the story of their inner plan. I'm sorry, their inner pain. The healing power of the inner queen brings inner pain to consciousness where it can fully be released and the soul freed. This can happen because of her compassion. She does not approach life with a fearful or judging nature, so she can move freely through all realms, witness great pain and darkness, and remain centered in her heart, shining a gentle light of intention for the liberation from suffering for all beings. She reminds us of our innate divine dignity and the healing power of our compassion. And this, to me, is a direct representation of Venus. Or the Empress. Okay, and the Empress here is representing unconditional love, compassion, nurturance, healing, and fertility. All right? So there you have it, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next chat Monday morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye. <laughs>